Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. On today's episode, I'll be talking about cabin crew skin requirements. So if you're interested, just keep on watching. But before we begin, I would like to invite those of you who are based in Manila, Philippines. I'll be holding the third cabin crew master class on February 16, 2020. In this session, I'll be teaching you about the requirements, how to become a cabin crew, how to do your makeup, what should you wear before going for the interview, and of course, I'll be sharing with you my techniques on how to effectively answer commonly asked questions. So if you're interested to join this class, please don't hesitate to send me an email at dayswithcat at gmail.com. I think um, we still have this idea that for you to become a cabin crew, you should have perfectly glowing skin, free of marks, scars, and whatnot. But nobody is like that, right? Nobody's born perfect. And of course, nobody in this world has zero scars in their body. So let's debunk all these myths when it comes to skin requirements for you to become a cabin crew. Let's first talk about moles and birthmarks. I don't know where people get the idea that if you have moles on your face, you cannot be a flight attendant because I do have a lot. Like, I think I have more than 20 moles on my face, but they are easily concealable. Meaning, um, it only depends on the location and how big your mole is. If it's easily concealable, it's fine. As a matter of fact, I've flown with a lot of cabin crew who has... Um, a mole that's elevated, um, in Tagalog, we would call it buhay na nunal. Um, I'll, I'll just post a, a photo right here so it's easier for you to understand and easier for me to explain as well. Um, I've flown with girls who have the big moles here or here. It's actually pretty much fine. I mean, we don't live in that day and age where a flight attendant has to be completely flawless. Now, when it comes to birthmarks, again, it depends on the location. If it's somewhere that is hidden when you wear the uniform, that is completely fine. Meaning if you have it on your back or your upper arm or somewhere in your tummy area, that is fine. But if you have birthmarks like this that covers your face, um, Sadly, it can be it can be a hindrance for you to be um, hired as a flight attendant. I wish we can be more open when it comes to uh, things like this, where if you have a, a a birthmark on your face. But sadly, I have never flown with anybody uh, who has uh, a huge birthmark on the face or in the arm or anywhere that is visible when they're wearing the uniform. Now let's talk about scars. Before I completely discuss the different types of scars, I want to start off by saying that when it comes to scars, it all depends on the location and the severity of your scar. Alright, let's begin with acne marks because these are the most common scars, um, I believe, that um, are very, very much observable when you go for your interview. So for acne marks like this, as long as it's not an active acne uh, problem, meaning you don't have the pus-filled pimples while you're going for the interview, it could be fine. However, there are acne marks that are a little bit deeper compared to the others like this. So I would suggest that you have to practice how to properly conceal your, your acne marks. I'm going to try to make a video about this in the future, um, how to properly conceal acne marks so that probably I can help you out. So it's just a matter of properly concealing your acne marks. Next, um, keloid scars. Again, it's going to depend on the location. So let's say you have a keloid mark over here. It's going to depend on the severity of the keloid as well. Um, it could be a very thin keloid or it could be a big one as well. But like what I said, if it's too visible on the uniform, it's a no-no. So now, if it's just somewhere hidden, like you have it here on the chest or somewhere here in your rib area or anywhere where keloid marks usually appear, that is completely fine. You just need to declare this to uh, the recruiter. But yes, it's, it's, it's completely okay as long as it's hidden in the uniform. Very common question about scars. I have scars on the knees. Um, well, a lot of us actually do have scars in the knees because we were all kids once and it's so fun to play outside. And it's, it's very hard to prevent you 
falling on the floor and having wound on your knees right so even i have a scar on my knees and i just declared this when i went for my application um what i would say about scars is that personally i don't think it should matter because anyway you're going to be wearing stockings when you go for your for the for the interview but if you want my tips about how how you can hide your scars just keep on watching until the end of the video and i'll share some tips for you next this one actually this is something that i am really um i don't know i have very strong emotions about this one skin color i've been receiving a lot of questions private messages or emails asking me do i have to be fair for me to be a flight attendant or i have dark skin can i be a flight attendant and my reply to these girls is always your skin color should never stop you from reaching your dreams and actually this is only a common problem in asia where we have this idea of beauty that for you to be considered beautiful you have to be fair fair skinned or you have to be um you know white but i think slowly we're we're breaking that um um wrong connotation about beauty morena or um tan skinned in my language in the philippines um is very beautiful and if you girls are thinking that just because you are morena or you're a little bit tan you're not gonna get hired it's completely wrong because there is beauty in every skin color. I've received messages from girls from Africa as well asking that, am I going to be hired because of my, you know, even if I have um, this skin color? Of course you're going to be hired and that's the beauty of applying for an international airline because the idea of beauty is very diverse and um, we're very open to it. I've flown with a lot of beautiful beautiful colored girls um so just to sum it up your skin color should never be an issue for you to be a flight attendant next stretch marks okay this is one thing that i i didn't really expect to receive because as women we will all have stretch marks it's just the reality of life we all have stretch marks because hello puberty and as young girls we don't really care much about moisturizing our skin it's the least of our concern when we were young girls so obviously we're gonna have probably stretch marks on our hips um back of our arms or the back of our knees and it's just normal um but i received concerns from girls asking oh, i have stretch marks at the back of my knees is it gonna be okay and the same is my answer um you're gonna be wearing stockings during your flight so why should it matter right but apparently it does matter to some recruiters or um interviewers that if you have stretch marks on your knees or back of your knees but again stay tuned at the end of the video i will share you tips on how you can minimize the appearance of uh, scars or the visibility of your scars okay let's proceed to the next topic and this is a little bit controversial tattoos um why uh you might ask uh why are tattoos a controversial topic when it comes to applying as a flight attendant because Especially when you're going to fly an international airline, you're going to be having customers who are from all walks of life, different culture, different nationalities. And we all know that tattoos can have different interpretation um, based on your nationality, your culture, or your beliefs. And this is just based on my opinion when it comes to tattoos. When you wear the uniform, you are sort of the brand ambassador of your airline. And the uniform itself of an airline is a brand. So probably if you're having a tattoo that is visible and it's right here and it's um, um, something that is related to your religion that might not align with the religious belief of other people, it can cause a little bit of... Um, um, branding uh, misalignment if that makes any sense because each airline have their own brand they have their own values and it might not align to the tattoo that you have so that is my opinion about that why they don't allow tattoos on visible parts of your body now having said that are tattoos allowed 
Yes, tattoos are allowed in certain airlines. Um, in fact, I have flown with a lot of girls in my previous airline who have tattoos that are not visible when they are wearing the uniform. So that is completely fine. Your whole back can be covered in tattoo or your whole, or if you're a guy, because most airline uniform for guys are full sleeve. It can have a full sleeve of tattoo. As long as this airline allows tattoos that are not visible when you're wearing the uniform. Um, sadly, there are also airlines who are very, very picky when it comes to stuff like this, um, like tattoo. Um, we cannot blame them. This is just their airline's regulations. Uh, is allowed. Let's start off with Vitiligo. Vitiligo, um, I have never really flown with anybody who has Vitiligo. If you're not aware what Vitiligo is, um, I don't know if you've heard the supermodel Winnie Harlow. She's one of the most famous people who has Vitiligo and it's so beautiful. And I wish we would hire people who have them because, again, we should be breaking barriers when it comes to beauty, right? And that's exactly what this supermodel is doing right now. Um, so to answer that question, I've never flown with anybody. I cannot say yes or no, but I haven't flown with anybody who has vitiligo. Next, um, psoriasis, eczema, um, um, chicken skin. These are conditions that can be managed. Like for example, for me personally, I have eczema. I don't know if you can see it here, but my skin gets really dry and irritated at certain times of the year or if I eat something that is not good for my skin, like, skin, like seafood, like that. So it's just a matter of managing the symptoms or trying to avoid it. Meaning, if you are, you're someone who has eczema or psoriasis or um, chicken skin, try to treat it first prior to going to your interview so that um, it's not going to be as visible. So that is the end of my explanation when it comes to cabin crew skin requirements so if you manage to reach this point you are probably curious about how you can probably hide your scars on your knees or stretch marks on your knees here's this product that we call um leg spray uh it's something like this the one that i know is sally hansen okay sally hansen leg spray and i've known this um since i was joining pageants way back in the days when i was still younger and this is what we use to make our legs look um flawless or to avoid the appearance of stretch marks on the hips this is what the uh, beauty pageant contestants do they spray it and then it dries up and it doesn't really transfer by the way my earrings for today are courtesy of ara underscore lovesky please don't hesitate to follow her on instagram as well she has a wide selection of accessories cute ones like the one that i'm wearing right here thank you very much ara underscore lovesky so there you have it i hope i managed to answer your questions when it comes to cabin crew skin requirements i know a lot of you are asking me is it allowed to have um botox or fillers or a nose job a boob job um, i'm gonna make a separate video about that because it's it's not really related to the skin but more of a cosmetic enhancement um thing so on my next video i'm gonna be sharing with you is it allowed for a flight attendant to have a nose job botox a boob job or a liposuction I'll keep you updated about that so if you haven't yet please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button so that once i upload new videos you're gonna be updated if you have any requests for future contents related to cabin crew please hit me up in the comment section and a lot of you are actually asking me about my instagram account i'm so sorry because i changed my instagram handle name and it's now days with kath official so if you wish to follow me on my personal stuff, um, yeah, please don't hesitate to follow me on Instagram at Days with Kat Official. And as always, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. This has been Days with Kat. I will see you next time. Bye!